Welcome back to another forensic science lesson. Today on the docket, we'll be discussing the Innocence Project, who, according to their website, is a nonprofit organization that works to free the innocent, prevent wrongful convictions, and create fair, compassionate, and equitable systems of justice for everyone. So feel free as we move through the lesson to pause the video as you need to, to take notes. This is a very quick lesson that's going to end with a bit of research where we're going to head over to the Innocence Project's website and just kind of dig through some of the cases that we're going to talk about. All right, now the Innocence Project, again, is a nonprofit organization. It was founded in 1992 by visionary attorneys Peter Newfield and Barry Sheck. Now, they were actually part of the defense team in the O.J. Simpson trial. We know how that turned out, um, but they were considered the dream team. So after they, they participated in the O.J. Simpson trial, they came together and formed the nonprofit, the Innocence Project. And they have a website. They have um, Innocence Project communities um, all over the United States, and they do a lot of important work. Now, their website estimates that in the U.S., between 1 and 10 percent of all prisoners are actually innocent, which is very astounding. And so they took this information um, and they generated a community. They called it the Innocence Project. And again, their goal is to re-examine post-conviction cases and exonerate those who are wrongfully convicted. Now, they use DNA evidence to do that. Um, and they have, to this date or to date, have reevaluated over 360 cases. What they found in reevaluating those 360 cases is that 87% were wrongful convictions. That is astounding. 87% of those 360 cases turned out to be wrongful convictions. So the wrong person was put into prison. The Innocence Project uh, was formed in the wake of a study that was conducted by the U.S. Department of Justice, which claimed that incorrect identification of eyewitnesses was a factor in over 70% of wrongful convictions. So armed with that knowledge, um, the Barry Sheck and Peter Newfield got together and said something's got to be done. And so they formed a team. They went into prisons. They talked to the prisoners uh, and they used DNA evidence to help exonerate those prisoners that have been wrongfully convicted. Uh, now, eyewitness accounts we talked about in the last lesson are not considered scientific evidence, yet eyewitness accounts have been used in the past to put countless number, number of uh, people behind bars. And what we were finding out through DNA evidence is that some of those eyewitness accounts accounts were faulty. Uh, studies have shown that eyewitnesses often give faulty information, whether they do so intentionally. Most of the time we know it's unintentionally, uh, but regardless, because of that faulty information, people have gone to prison. And for this reason, the justice system now frowns upon convictions based solely on eyewitness accounts. They like to have some evidence uh, to go along with it. We know eyewitness accounts are important. They provide leads that can lead to evidence, and then that evidence can be used in court to convict an individual. Um, but we no longer use eyewitness accounts solely to convict someone of a crime. Now, the Innocence Project focuses exclusively on post-conviction appeals where DNA evidence is available to be tested or either retested. Now, what we're going to do in class is we are going to head over to the Innocence Project's website. So we're going to go to the innocenceproject.org. We're going to click on cases and we're going to dig through and look at some of those cases. Remember, there's over 360 cases. Uh, we're going to look through some of those cases and you're going to select one. You're going to research that case and then you're going to create uh, an Innocence Project banner from that uh, to showcase what you found. And I will see you in the next lesson.